The Lord be with you. I want to welcome each of you here on the sixth Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of Easter, but you know what? Easter really truly doesn't end because the reality of our risen Savior goes on each and every day. So every day of the church year in one way is an Easter. But again today we proclaim he is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. One of the points of the reading for today, among the many points that could be made, is that as we look to the end of the book of Revelation, what we find is that there is a promise that God is taking care of us. And it's a promise that we cling to on a daily basis. Our opening hymn for today is Alleluia, Jesus is risen, please rise and we sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its ending, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. 
Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its ending, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for today is from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When Paul had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Also, or so, setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who could come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Therastia, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged saying, 
If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Revelations chapter 21, verses 9 through 14 and 21 through 27. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and show me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and the gates, 12 angels, and on the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. And on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And the 12 gates were 12, at the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Some of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, transparent as glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of the God comes, gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will be nations, by its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory onto it. And the gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into the glory and to the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable, detestable or false, but only those who are written to the Lamb's book of life. This is the word of the Lord.
speak together with me these words from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and I ask for the children to come forward for the children's message. Thank you kindly. So how are you guys doing today? You doing pretty good? Yes. That is good. Now, I need you to help me answer some questions, okay? I have some big questions in my mind. Do you think I have some big questions? I do. So you, you can help me because I know you guys probably know the answers. So are there people who love and care for me? There are. Who loves me? Jesus. Part, gee, oh, you, what else do I need to say? You're absolutely right. Jesus does love me. That is absolutely right. But who else loves me? Do you think my mom and dad loved me? Do you think your moms and dads love you? So let's talk about you for just a moment. Do your moms and dads make sure you have clothes to wear? Obviously. Do they make sure you, you have food for your bellies? Good food? Yep. Um, do you have a bed to sleep in? So your moms and dads, they're taking care of you, right? Well, my mom and dad took care of me, too. Who else takes care of you? So do you have friends to take care of you? 
help you out? I know you have friends. Uh, do you have grandparents who help take care of you? Do you have teachers who help take care of you? Oh my goodness, that's exciting. But you know what? I actually, I got the right answer just a little bit ago. You know who takes care of you the most? Jesus does. One of the things I found out in today's readings from, from God's Word, did you know that God takes care of you from the moment, from the moment that He brings you into His kingdom all the way to the very, very end? And you know, you're going to have life eternal. That's exciting, isn't it? And did you know that I just read some passages that told everybody that they have a future, that even if sometimes they have some struggles, do, do, do we ever have struggles? Sometimes you ever do something wrong and get in trouble? You ever get hurt? Do you ever almost fall off the step? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to be worried about this. Um, <laughs> I, I, thank you. Um, so but we, but, but we have people who take care of us. Did you know that God takes care of us too? The biggest thing he did is that he sent Jesus who forgives us. And that's an exciting thing, isn't it? So can you help me pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you take care of us. We thank you for our Savior. We thank you for the help you give us each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can go ahead and go back to your seats and we'll continue with our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever watched a movie or TV series, but as you watch it, you realize that you pretty well know what the outcome is going to be? Well, when, when my brother was at a certain age, he was one of those people who wanted to know the answer of something, even though the answer was coming. And so he would sit watching some sort of a crime drama or some sort of a a movie or a TV show that created anxiety about a beloved main character. And he would say, Terry, is that person going to die? And my answer always was, Patrick, no. Normally, they do not kill off a main character in the story. So I was pretty well able to tell what was going to happen on the basis of what I knew to be true about the story in general. Even though that there was anxiety and there was fear as you watch, you can have a sense of security and that in spite of all the bad stuff that's happening, everything is going to turn out just fine. Or you're reading a book and, oh, you really love the characters in this book, And the book is creating some tension, it's creating some drama, it's creating some some anxiety that you wonder whether the, the main character in the book is going to do okay. Because sometimes, you know, novels are a little bit different than TV shows and movies. People don't always turn out well in novels. Well, so what do you do? I have to confess I've done it. Has anyone ever turned to the last chapter of the book to just to get that little glimmer of the answer? Anyone ever done that? You know, and, I, and, and some people say, well, that ruins the whole book for them. For me, no, it never did because, well, I would then be able to fill in the blanks. It was still exciting. Here in the book of Revelation, God actually gives us a glimpse of the end, the final outcome for us, for the church, for all of creation. He gives us this glimpse to help us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, as we are still living a life that continues to have struggle and problems and dilemmas, we see the sin around us and the trouble around us and the trials and temptations around us. But we get to read the back of the book, the final chapter, and we find out we win. Well, actually, God is the one who wins the battle. And we, the church, share in that victory over sin, death, destruction, pain, and sorrow, purely, merely, by his grace, by his mercy, by his love. So we get a picture, a glimpse of a wedding. But the description is not exactly like the weddings at the end of Disney princess movies. In those movies, you see the princess and the groom, the prince, walk up to the front where they're going to be married, and we get the idea that it's going to be a happily ever after kind of event. Now, the church is going to be happily ever after, quite frankly, but the church triumphant is described a little bit differently. It is described as the bride, the wife of the lamb, not some Disney prince, but the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus Christ himself, who has gone to the cross in our place, taken our sin, has gone into hell, gone into to proclaim the victory against Satan, has gone into heaven, has celebrated, isn't it a wonderful thing? It's the Lamb himself who is the groom and the church is the bride. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul describes how Jesus loves the church and he calls us his bride and that he has done everything necessary that he could present himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle, but that she would be holy and blameless. The picture is that of a royal wedding. Here in Revelation chapter 21, however, it does something a little different, that it describes a royal city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, beautiful, brilliant, magnificent. There are 12 gates that are always open, which represent the Old Testament people of God. 
There are 12 precious stones at the foundation that represent the New Testament people of God. It's an enormous city. It is a perfect cube. The city has no temple because God the Father and the Lamb are its temple. They are the focus and the center of all the worship. It has no sun or moon for the Lamb is the lamp. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the light that takes away darkness. Behold the glory and splendor of God as it shines brightly. And there it is always day and there is no more night. Now these images do indeed stretch our imagination. The glory and wonder of eternity with Jesus is way beyond what words can possibly even begin to adequately express. But God himself gives us this glimpse Right now, as the church still on earth, as people who still are alive, we are tempted and sometimes we fall. We get discouraged, but we should never give up. We find that we are surrounded by sin, that we are surrounded by challenges, that we are surrounded by worries, that we are surrounded by the fear of failure, both as individuals and also even as a church. You know, as we listen to people, I don't know about you, but I know I have heard people say as they talk about all of the circumstances in the world going on around them, they'll say, just look at what's going on. I don't know how the world will survive. Or they look at the circumstances in their life and they'll say, I don't know how I can possibly go on. How will I survive? But here in Revelation, we hear how our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, written in the blood that he sacrificed on the cross when he died for us. And we have the assurance that we are his, having been marked with the cross. He put his name on us in baptism and we belong to him. By grace through faith, we cling to the promise. This glimpse of the end gives us hope and encouragement when times are tough, when he, we get discouraged and when things look entirely hopeless. So we look at our lives and we see the trouble that we face. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I want you to think about this. How many of you have at least one thing going on in your life that really troubles you? How many of you struggle with at least one sin in your life that really troubles you? How many of you wonder how the outcome of your life is going to be because it really troubles you? Right? But. We know how the book is going to end. For all of us, we are going to spend eternity with God in heaven. And we know that as we wait, God is still with us continuing to forgive us, continuing to strengthen us, continuing to give us the help we need in time of trouble. We know how the story ends. We look at the world around us. We see wars, and we see problems, and we see conflict, and we wonder how is this going to end? It certainly doesn't look good. But we know how the story ultimately ends. We turn to the end of the book and we hear in Revelation 21 that we will indeed spend eternity with God in heaven, that there will be no more crying, there will be no more tears, there will be no more death, there will always be light. We will be in the presence of God forever and ever and ever. Amen. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we have the promise that God is with us. He hasn't abandoned us. Sometimes as we react badly to the troubles around us, thank God that he's forgiven us. Sometimes as we even begin to doubt, thank God that he gives us his word where he reminds us again and again and again, he hasn't abandoned us. Amen.
One of the problems with Disney princess movies is they have these endings at the end where they say they live happily ever after. And I've often wondered, really, if these were real people, what would their lives be like? You know, I kind of have this, this, this image of Snow White, you know, you know, ending up with five kids and having to take them to the grocery store. One kid is hard enough at the grocery store or Target or Walmart. I can tell you from experience, two kids was a trial. But you know, the reality is for all of us, we know that we have something greater and more than a happily ever after kind of answer. We have a in the presence of God answer. God's help answer. Now I know that as we journey through life, we're going to continue to have our struggles, our worries, our anxiety. But again, we turn to the end of the book and we know the answer, our Savior Jesus. Now may the peace that passes all our human understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. Friends in Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God to pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us your grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn us from all false teaching and evil living whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned, Lord, in your mercy. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased, Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world in its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil, both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Very happy to have some visitors with us today. Please sign our guest book in the Northex as you leave. We'd like to get your name and get to meet you, hopefully. Uh, we got a couple of announcements made by two different people in the congregation. Uh, Jimmy Birmingham will come up. Good morning. I would like to encourage everyone uh, today when you're leaving to go by in the back of the church and pick up one of our baby bottles for our baby bottle boomerang for the Pregnancy Help Center. Any amount that you can donate would be greatly appreciated. All of the funds go to help the clients there. So again, you can donate pennies, nickels, dollars. You can even give a credit card. So I thank you so very much. Uh, we are halfway through our program. We have two weeks left. So if everybody would return their baby bottle on Father's Day, which is two Sundays from now, 
Thank you so much. Okay, Mike Guevara has a few announcements. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to give everyone another reminder that Vacation Bible School is happening June 20th through 23rd. Uh, Tree of Life, it's going to be very fun. Uh, lots of volunteer opportunities, so don't think that you have to, have to just lead kids from one spot to the other. There's plenty of ways to serve uh, within Vacation Bible School. So if you have any thoughts or questions, come find me in the narthex, and I will help you get signed up where you want to be. Uh, also, today is graduation Sunday. We are recognizing all of our graduates. Graduates. So if you want some free swag and a free treat, uh, come find me in the back of the narthex as well. I got some stuff for you there. So come find me here in a second. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you Mike. Mm -hmm. Just a few more announcements. Uh, let me see here. We've already had our Sunday morning breakfasts. Uh, just a reminder that Lynn VR is still teaching a class in the fellowship hall for, during Sunday school. Pastor's teaching a class in room Luke upstairs during Sunday school. Uh, Mike mentioned today is a graduation Sunday. And the big thing is we have a congregational assembly meeting right after this service, right after we have the uh, graduates out there. And it'll be in the fellowship hall with a meal, I think it's sandwiches and salad. And then it's going to be the elections of our new boards for the next two years, our board members for the next two years. So please come and attend if you can. Have a couple of salads and sandwiches and whatever and enjoy. Fellowship too. So we're going to get Clint to usher you out this morning. Thank you, Clint. Mm -hmm.